Here we go. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Can you see the person touch? How did you like that, Emily? Emily, what am I doing? I want to look. We should be so honest. How did you like that, there, Emily? Oh, me, ask me, ask me, ask me. Wow, look at that. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. 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 Look at <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> it's so Is good it to have you. It's been filming for like seven <laughs> minutes. <so. laughs> okay, so what are we doing for an introduction? We're saying, we should. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Princeton Tonight, Princeton's only and best student run TV show where we make videos that we hope you'll like and we show them to you. Uh, my name's Cam Kerr. My name's Emily Shemrine. And I'm Seth Benzikri. Hey, we hey. got there in the end. My lovely assistants will be helping me along with this month's episode. Assistant? My lovely assistants. Oh, okay. That's you know, like my beautiful assistant, like a magician. You should say your title. My title? Show oh, alright. Yeah, I'm no assistant, I'm creative director. Oh, he's creative. And I'm producer. And I'm showrunner um, for my sins. <laughs> Right, well let's get to it, let's get to it then. Um, first video, um, the wonderful and talented Grace Link, um, our actress from Hailing from London, were, uh, took a trip into New York City um, over the weekend uh, to speak to her good friend Lee Zimmerman from the musical Chicago. Uh, she brought a camera with her um, and an incompetent crew. Uh, <laughs> sorry, here's what, here's sorry, I was on Emily. that crew. Yeah, I know. <laughs> here's what came of that. production in 1996, the original revival of Chicago um, here on Broadway, and I was with the show for two and a half years. And then I, um, in 2001, I started playing Val McKelly in London, in the London production. And since then, for the last 16 years, <laughs> I've been going back and forth between the London production and New York, and then the London production closed. And here we are, 21 years later, um, still running on Broadway. And you've still got the energy and the zest to just yes. go on and just do eight shows a week. Oh, I do! It's eight shows a week and five of them are on the weekend. They're Friday, two Saturday, two Sunday. That's so unbelievable. We, we kind of really crank it out on the weekends. And this is your what your fourth time playing Belgrade? Yes, yes. I've been back and forth between London and New York four times and so it's, it's great because it's kind of a revolving door um, within each character, we all get to go and come. Um, it's a different experience with uh, a long-running show like this than anything new. Um, our producers actually want us to come and go, and you know, go shoot a film, go do a TV series, go do another show, and then come back because it keeps it fresh. And so it when you fresh. first uh, started as Velma, you, this was the year after you gave birth to Katie. Yes. And how did you get yourself ready for that after? Well, it was really interesting. Uh, I didn't think I could. <laughs> After about nine months, I was ready to go back to work, but I also wanted to be a full-time mom, so I really struggled with that. So my first thing was a, a play in the West End called The Seven Year Itch um, with Daryl Hannah, and it was an incredible kind of transition for me back in, because I didn't have a starring role, and I didn't have to worry about really being 100% back in shape. Mm -hmm. 
but it got me back into the eight shows a week, and it got me back into, you know, just being in the room uh, with great people. The room where it happens. Yeah, and <laughs> they were exactly, the room where it happens. And then um, Kaylee got a little bit older, you know, by the time she was 15, 16 months old, um, I actually went into Chicago for the first time with a Roxy whose daughter was nine months old. Oh my god. So we basically had a crash backstage. We had a little, yeah, a little, oh, you know, baby. In the room. Exactly. But between our two rooms, we had these gates, you know, in front of the stairs, and the kids would run back and forth. It was hilarious. So she's really grown up in, in the dressing room. Yeah, my daughter's grown up. I, and and in trailers, you know, on, on set. And, yeah. and she's an incredibly gifted performer herself. Thank um, you. Okay, thank Sounds you. Sounds like we can go down to the Let's go. Stage. Let's go to the stage. Oh, here we are on stage at the Ambassador Theatre for Chicago the Musical. Um, this is our lovely house. It's 1,100 seats. Which still um, gets filled every still night. Still gets filled. After 21 years. It's pretty exciting. And there's even standing room that happens. The one thing you learn in London is to not push. Because sometimes if you don't get a laugh that you think you've heard it, it as a bigger laugh, mm -hmm. and it's the same lesson wow. here from audience to audience, you might think, oh, I got a huge laugh on that line last night. Now why didn't, oh, maybe I should hit it harder. And it starts to change wow. your performance. Yeah, don't let it. Big mistake, yeah, don't let it. Exactly. Yeah. You sit in this side, and so the beginning is, come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And then, da-da-da-da, bump, bump, and all that jazz. I'm yep. going to rouge my knee. I'm going to rouge my knee and roll my stockings down. And then we just, just do this perfect little signature Fosse move, just a hip, and all, all that, that jazz. jazz. Start the car. I know a whoopee spot. Is your thigh burning yet? Oh, oh, it is. Okay, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's in. <laughs> now we finally get to move. Where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall. So this one, we finally get to sit on the right. Like yep. turning in, turning mm -hmm. in. Stand. Noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all. Boom. That. Boom. Jazz. Three. Excellent. Oh, She's in. She you know. It's it's a physical and mental you and emotional. Yeah, you're... I'm up the ladders. I'm all over this set. But it's really, you know, it's such a fulfilling show because it does challenge every part of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you. Much for coming. You're so wonderful. It, and I hope everybody can come and see the show. Everyone get back to Chicago yes. and go and get tickets right now. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna be <laughs> Oh boy, why? It's quite good. I think I was one last night. Got better rhythm than Grace. <laughs> right, enough of that. No, I knew it. Right. I don't like jazz. Look. I'm gonna ruin right. the only right. thing you do worse than dancing is singing. All right. <laughs> right, but enough of that. Uh, right. Next. Thanks, Grace, for that wonderful piece. Uh, and we apologize and to the Thanks audience to well. for being subjected to um, Grace's moves. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. No, 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 no. She tried. She tried her best. Good job, Grace. We love she you. She tried her best. Putting <laughs> swiftly on. Um, Next up, um, we've got a slight public service announcement from the wonderful Rachel Cooper. The wonderful Rachel Cooper. The wonderful Amazing. Rachel Cooper. The talented stalwart Rachel Cooper. Definitely a stalwart. Who took to the streets of Princeton uh, in the passing weeks um, to warn them of a dangerous chemical infecting the streets. Seb, did you know about this chemical? Which chemical would this, would this happen to me? Is it DMO? DHMO. DHMO. Dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen monoxide. I'm that sounds you. terrifying. What is dihydrogen monoxide? Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Rachel Cooper with On the Street. <sighs> hey everyone, it's Rachel from Princeton Tonight. And today, we're out on the street getting public opinion about a dangerous chemical known as DHMO. Let's hear what people have to say about it. We're students doing a video um, about environmental chemistry. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to talk about some um, chemicals that are in our food and drink that a lot of people don't really know about. Have you ever heard of the chemical DHMO? I have not heard of DHMO. Nope. No. No. Doesn't ring a bell. Yes, I have. And do you know what it is? No, I do not. I've not 
um, an expert on it. <laughs> I have not. No clue. I can tell you if my life depended on it. DHMO is dihydrogen monoxide or hydroxyl acid. It's actually found in a lot of our food and drinks and it's completely unregulated. It's something that isn't really being talked about, but there's a big movement to ban it right now. Right. Just a little bit background about it. Um, there's a lot of research coming out. It can be linked to a lot of different diseases and um, bad outcomes. Sometimes ingestion of it, it can throw off electrolyte balances in your body. It can even cause burning. Accidental inhalation can even be fatal sometimes. It can be linked to cancer. So it can be found in um, biopsies of tumor cells post-mortem of cancer patients. So it's been found in the diets of a lot of criminals convicted of violent crimes. Why is it unregulated? Um, that's what we're trying to find out. So we're, we're trying to kind of like raise awareness about it. We're like, how is this not mm -hmm. being talked about more? Um, and how are people kind of letting it fly under the radar? Mm -hmm. What do you think about the fact that it's just completely unregulated in our food? I mean, if that's all true. I don't, I don't want it in my food. I think it's horrible and it sounds like they're trying to poison us or kill us on purpose. That's where my head's going right now. The government should do something about it. It's a bad thing to not have such regulations. Well, I'm not happy that it's not regulated, but on the flip side of that, what's the point of regulating it if it's allowed elsewhere and then comes into our country? I mean, it's just dangerous. I think it's bad, and that's part of the reason why if you care about yourself, your body, and the world, you should become a vegan. And it's even sometimes found in completely all-natural products. It's actually usually labeled under different names to make it seem like it's not there. That's kind of scary. It's a problem. There's, there's a, uh, an educational lapse right now in what we're eating and perhaps there needs to be more awareness and perhaps consequences for using such chemicals. Something that we're trying to lean towards is banning it in our food and food products in America. Do you think you would be in support of banning DHMO? Definitely, yes. Oh yes, definitely in banning, yes. I definitely am. I would be in favor of banning it. I think uh, it, it would be a great idea, <laughs> yeah something has to be done. We've been testing and it's even found inside the plastic of most water bottles sold in grocery stores. I, I, I didn't know that. Plastic water bottles are bad for many other reasons too. Eliminating them is probably a good idea. Actually um, part of what we've been researching why it's inside water bottles is because it's water. Oh it's water? <laughs> Interesting. Oh is it? Okay. So DHMO is not a harmful chemical? DHMO is dihydrogen monoxide or H2O. Oh. Nice. Oh my, you certainly got me. <laughs> well, that was you just put a you just put a, a a whammy on us. Everything I said is still true about it. It still is linked to all those things. It is in the diet of prisoners convicted of of crimes. It is found in tumor cells just like the rest of our cells. If all of this is true, which it is, should we ban water? I don't think we should ban water, no. Do you think it's dangerous? Sounds like it, yep. We should, we should be a lot more careful about drinking water. We should probably just never have it. Well, I wouldn't say that, but... Uh. What you're telling us actually is we are doomed no matter what we do. Go to France and drink wine. <laughs> Don't know that one. Oh, should we tell it, Marissa? Um, tell it. No, no. <sighs> Who's there? Telling it to Emily. No, no. Who's there? The interrupting sheep. Okay. But what? <laughs> Do you know no no jokes for it? The interrupting sheep. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Christ ah. almighty, I want to die. Ah. Shut up, Alex. <laughs> uh. Wait, Emily's going to somersault into this one. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> up next, we have one of our wonderful freshmen, Nick Che, visiting the studio. Of the fantastic photographer uh, Nathan Johnson in his studio in New York City. Yeah, so um, in 2017, Nathan came to the inaugural Princeton University Film Festival, and um, Nick, who's a very keen, uh, budding amateur photographer, was introduced to Nathan. An amateur Casey Neister. Uh, indeed, an amateur Casey Neister. Um, he was introduced to Nathan, and uh, through the festival, he got invited out to Nathan's studio. So, really, a great story all round. Success yeah. story. And if yes. you want to check out more about the Princeton University Film Festival, you can look on our website, PrincetonTonight.com. We're going into our second year this summer. Also, a uh, special mention must be made to uh, Nick's own uh, social media. Like I mentioned, he is a budding amateur filmmaker and photographer and is already building quite a name for himself on YouTube and online. Uh, you can visit his website at NicholasChay.com um, and you can find him on YouTube and Twitter. And Vimeo. And Vimeo. And Vimeo. And Instagram. 
And Vimeo. And Vimeo. <laughs> Vimeo is the important thing. And Vimeo. Uh, yeah. Without further ado, please check out his wonderful work that you can find on Vimeo. <laughs> My name is Nathan Johnson. I am the owner of Drift Studio, also the creative director of the X Magazine by Today Ticks. So I first moved to the city about 10 years ago with my wife. She got a job on Broadway and, um, and I was an actor at that point. So I was doing a lot of auditioning um, for shows and you know I was waiting in line at 6, 7 a.m. putting my name in on the list and these giant cattle calls and, and just trying to get seen. And I, I quickly realized that wasn't necessarily the life that I wanted. Um, but I love the industry of Broadway and, and I love the entertainment industry and that sort of thing. So I started thinking about other things that I love to do and one of the things was photography. Um, and I kind of got this idea to maybe open up a photography studio, which I did. I ended up doing that like on 56th Street and 8th Avenue. And that's where I kind of started to work with a lot of actors. Um, that's where I shot my first campaign uh, was when I was over there. I shot for Bonnie and Clyde. What I do right now is, is a really a great balance between um, the theater and, and the entertainment industry and photography all coming together. Honestly, it's a, it's a great place for me to be. I, I love supporting theater. I love photographing theater. I love, um, you know, getting my teams together to be able to create work that, that really promotes theater and makes it look as glamorous and sexy as possible. I mean, I just, um, whatever I can do to help support the industry, that's kind of how I see myself as somebody that's able to support what they're doing on stage. It's, I'm able to, you know, garner more attention and, and show them off, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a great place for me to be. So I've really wanted Drift Studio to be a place where creatives can come, they can feel like they're inspired in this space, they can feel like it's a little bit of a blank canvas. Uh, I wanted it to feel comfortable for my clients and my friends and for the community. And so Drift Studio, see a lot of the, the stuff we have is this wood or old iron or this kind of worn feel. We've really played off the High Line because we're at we're right along the High Line. And now what they've done is they've made it a, a park for New Yorkers. And it runs like from 34th Street down to like 14th Street. And I really wanted to kind of have that feel. I think we've achieved that, but it's been a really great space. We've, we've been able to have really amazing clients and be able to see some really incredible work that's been created here. So um, it's been fascinating to be a part of. Yeah, we've had some great actors from Riverdale and other CW shows. We've had Vogue has shot here and, and GQ and Harper's Bazaar and all those cats. Um, all the magazines basically have all been through here at some point. And then on, on the other hand, I've had um, people from Breaking Bad or I've had shows, you know, people from AMC. I've had, you know, Samuel Jackson and Robert Redford and all these great people that I really respect. And so it's been a cool place to have just people that, you, you know, I don't get to necessarily connect with those people outside of this environment when they come in here. You know, I'm able to talk to Daniel Radcliffe or something like that, where if I saw him on the street, I would never approach him. Or if we were at an event, you know, he's crazy busy. But when he's here, he's able to be, you know, it's just a set of 15 people. And it's like, it's a, being on set is just a little bit, it's, it's a little different. Everybody's there for, to get the best product possible. Everybody's there to get the best outcome and create the best work possible. So it's a, it's a fun space to be in. So my favorite part of photo shoots and about creating is the collaborations. Um, I love having um, different people that are really good at their jobs. Um, I love partnering with them and I love, because what I can do, I, I, I can create good work on my own, but I can create much better work with other talented people. So today, like we've got a photo shoot this afternoon and you know, it's like when you find a great model and a great makeup artist and a great hairstylist, it's like 
now, now we're all for working together, trying to create something better. Or, you know, if we're shooting a Broadway campaign, you know, we've got the art director and the, and the creative director of the company, and we're all putting our heads together to create something that is much better than what we could do just one person on their own. Some people are lone wolves. I like collaborating. Um, and so, honestly, like photo shoots, I, I, I think being on set is always just kind of, it's exciting. I think every set's a little bit different, and you get to create the environment that you, like when a client comes in here, the set is what I want it to be, and I set the tone for those, for those shoots. And so I'm, I have a lot of fun doing that, too. So some advice that I would have for aspiring photographers and, and filmmakers, I, I just, I think it's important to just, you know, get out there and shoot and um, find out what you're passionate about. I, I'm kind of somebody that comes with the school of thought of just shoot everything until you start to understand where, what your niche is. And um, I, it took me a while, I was shooting weddings, I was shooting, you know, uh, what else was I doing, senior portraits and that sort of thing back in Minnesota, you know, 12, 12 years ago. and. I realized very quickly that's not what I wanted to do and it's not what I, the type of work that I wanted to be shooting. So, in fact, that's why I think I came into photography a little bit later because I didn't see that wasn't what I really, really enjoyed. So I hadn't found it yet. Um, and it took me being an actor to actually kind of get me thinking in that sphere of like, oh, maybe there's something I can do here with my community this way. But um, I think shoot everything until you start realizing what you're passionate about and what you want to kind of focus in on and then uh, do that, but then also start just watching the other people that are sitting in the space that you want to be working in and See what they're doing and what you would want to change and all that sort of stuff So um, and then I think for that it's after there. It's, it's just like doing as much as you can but also um, You know read as much as you can and, and look up as much Tutorials and behind the scenes as you can online as well. There's so many resources, you know, some people do college classes totally great for me I taught myself and I was I you know, it's a little bit of trial and error, and uh, which I think can be a real, you know, a real good teacher. Failure can be a good teacher, you know, and, and finding what, what you didn't do so great on a shoot and how can you fix it, how can you make it better the next time. I'm always working to make my work better. So this photo shoot this afternoon, I'm, I'm literally thinking like, what, what can I try that I haven't tried before? Like, how can I push my boundaries? And there's always a risk for failure, but I think um, that like, that little, the little butterflies, they just never leave me. Like they're always there when I'm trying something new. And um, I think that's a good thing, you know? So Princeton Knight, thank you for joining us. You're on the set of Drift Studios and uh, it's been fun having you. <laughs> read some jokes. Yeah, yeah, read some jokes. Uh, I think I want to. I think I want a job cleaning mirrors. It's just something I could really see myself doing. <laughs> I think it's funny. Oh, I'm glad. Is that wrong? What's something that's red and bad for your teeth? I don't know what's something that's red and bad for your teeth. A brick. This is so awkward. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and I'll just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was bound to happen. Sorry. Well, with that, we come to the end of the favourite episode of Princeton Tonight. We hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed sitting here listening to Emily's crap chat for hours on end. Uh, we're going to play you out with um, a video by our resident prankster, Noah Meehan. Uh, who's going to give us an insight into his troubled, terrible mind. <laughs> I'm going to leave it to our own resident troubled, terrible mind, Emily, to introduce the video. This is a video about dropping spiders on people. And <laughs> the how, end. How did you relate to this video? I just killed a spider today. You just killed Jesus. a spider today. Murderer. Boom out. <laughs> I'm Noah, and this is the spider prank. Hey, how's it going? Good. <laughs> <laughs>
Ha, ha, ha. 